I'm entering something divine. I'm entering something that traveled through seven heavens. When Najmi the Hawa, Ma Ladna Sahibukum, Wama Hawa. Behina TV doesn't just teach you about the Quran. You can also learn Arabic from a brilliant teacher. Ustad Naman Ali Khan has made this beautiful ancient language easy to understand. So you're not only improving your language skills, but your understanding of the Quran too. Tap now to check out Behina TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa an-najmi idha hawa. ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd. Uh, once again, everyone, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, I'd like to first start by thanking all of the people involved at Epic uh, to make this program possible. Uh, I'm going to take uh, this few minutes in the beginning to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing, inshallah, and get right into the material because we don't have a lot of time contrary to what it might feel like. So um, the concept, the idea behind this program, Quran Week, which actually I'm traveling with all over the world, and um, I plan on doing a different surah in every location, uh, is to actually help Muslims everywhere in the world begin to contemplate the Quran directly. We all know that we should be thinking about the Quran, contemplating the Quran, understanding it better. But for the most of us, we don't know what first steps we're supposed to take. How do you even do that? How do you begin to engage with the Quran? And for a lot of people, even though, of course, we all say the words Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, for most of us, when we read the translation of the Quran, it kind of it leaves us in confusion. We skip over parts. We're like, ah, I don't get that part. Okay, let me go to this part. Let me go to this part. And so there's a lot of gaps in our understanding of what Allah is saying. and Part of the intent of this program is to bridge that gap and to help each one of you see, including myself, how beautiful and rich the word of Allah is, right? So what I'm going to do now in this 30-minute session, and by the way, just so you're clear about the schedule, I'm going to start at 7.30 every day. The Isha prayer here is at 8 o'clock. So I have that 30-minute window to get, at least get something out. And I need to take that opportunity. So even if you're coming in late or whatever, I'm going to start at 7.30. In fact, I'll be here probably 7 or before 7. So if you'd like to ask questions or anything like that, before 7 is fine. I'll already come prepared. So you're not going to mess up my preparation. Once I'm here, I'm at your service, inshallah. So 7.30 to 8, then we're going to pray Isha. And then 8.15, I'll be here right back again. We're going to have about a 45 to 50 minute session. If I'm really feeling like I want to, you know, ruin your life, I'll have an hour-long session. After that, I'm going to give you a break. Uh, and then you can fight over jai and coffee, whatever they put back there. You have about five, seven minutes of a break, no more than that. And we'll have our final session. That's the idea. There are two goals we have this week. Uh, one, the primary objective, the main goal I have is to share with you tadabbur, and I'll explain what that means on Surah Al-Najm, Surah number 53 of the Qur'an. So for those of you who didn't know, we're going to be diving as much as we can into Surah number what? 53, An-Najm, okay? And our second goal is going to be something Sheikh Suhaib Saeed and I call uh, lenses, five lenses to, to contemplate the Qur'an. What that means is, what are five things you guys should be thinking about when you want to begin to contemplate the Qur'an? Okay, so let's get right into the work. I'm going to tell you some things about what the dabbur means, what deep contemplation, what, what does that mean? Allah in the Quran did not say that thinking deeply about the Quran is a, an extracurricular activity. We know that some things in Islam are absolutely necessary, like the five, five prayers, there's no compromise on the five prayers. Some things are haram, they're absolutely haram, there's no compromise. 
tadabbur of the Qur'an, contemplating, thinking deeply about the Qur'an, is actually something Allah demands in the Qur'an and complains when people don't do it. So it's not something light. It's not if you have time, you should do it. In fact, he says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran Twice. He says, don't they then think deeply about the Qur'an? Twice he asked that question. Also, he says that he sent this book down for lots of reasons, right? So he says he sent it as, as guidance. Everybody knows that answer. The Qur'an was sent as a guidance. Another place in the Qur'an, he says, أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ A book we sent down to you full of blessings for the goal that they should contemplate its ayat. They should think deeply about its ayat. So the fact that you and I have to think about the ayat of Allah deeply and engage in contemplation is actually one of the main goals of the Qur'an. Nowadays, the tragedy has become, and it's been there for a few centuries. So we didn't start this problem, but we're continuing the problem. And that is when somebody says, I'm, I'm learning Qur'an, or my child is learning Qur'an. You know what that means? They're memorizing Qur'an, or they're learning tajweed, or they're learning how to, re- to sound the words. And we call that learning Qur'an. When the Qur'an came down, nobody called that learning Qur'an. Nobody called that learning Qur'an. When someone was learning Qur'an, they were pondering the Qur'an. They were thinking about the Qur'an. They were trying to understand the Qur'an. So now that I've said that br- brief introduction, now I want to make clear for all of you two concepts that usually get confusing for, for us. Tafsir and tadabbur. I'm going to define these two terms for you. Tafsir and what? Tadabbur. Okay. Tafsir is basically, am I understanding the ayah correctly? What do the words mean? Do I know anything about when the ayah was given to the Prophet ﷺ? What is the context of the ayah? Is it being translated correctly? Is my understanding, the, 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 the lesson I'm supposed to get from this ayah, am I getting that correctly? That is tafsir. And tafsir work, our scholars have done centuries and centuries of work on tafsir. Sometimes they have debates in tafsir. We'll see that too. Sometimes there's debates. But for the most part, tafsir is basically research-based. You have to do the research. What does this word mean? What does this ayah mean? What, what, how did the companions understand it? What was the story behind this ayah, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. All of that is the study of what? Tafsir. Okay? The mufassir, the people who wrote tafsir, they had a few basic questions in front of them. And when they answered those three, four, five questions, they moved to the next ayah. Then they asked the same three, four, five questions, then they moved to the next ayah. What does the ayah mean? When was it revealed? What, are, what, are, what, the, what did the early scholars or early companions say about this? Did the Prophet ﷺ say something about this, etc.? There's a few questions. Once they answer those questions, they move on to the next ayah. Okay? Now then there is, and by the way, in tafsir, if you, were, if you went to a tafsir library, and soon you'll see on YouTube, Sheikh Suhaib and I have done a video series. We've recorded it. We're going to release it soon on a tafsir library, walking through a tafsir library. His library, actually, in Scotland. But anyway, if you went through a tafsir library, it would be like going to like the literature department in the library. You have different kinds of literature, right? And under each category, you got different books, but, but there's kind of similar genre. There are different kinds of tafsir, different specializations in tafsir. A tafsir bil ma'thur, a tafsir al lughawi al adabi, al ishari. There's all different kinds of tafsir. And each one of them, there's multiple people who did lots of work in each one of those categories. So tafsir is a big world. It's a, it's a very big world, okay? But at the end of it all, it's where scholars do their work to try to explain the lessons of the ayah in simple language to you, okay? Now, that's tafsir, but there's one more thing. What was the other thing? Tadabbur. What in the world is tadabbur? Tadabbur is, okay, now I know what the ayah means. Now I know something about the... The, the, the history of it or the placement of it and all of that stuff. I answered all the basic tafsir questions. What does it mean for me? What is this ayah they're doing for me? Like, what do I get from it? How, do I, how does it change my view of the world? In other words, there's the information and then there's the impact of that information. You understand? Tafsir will give you the information. Tadabbur is basically an exercise. How is this impacting my heart? How is it changing my view of the world? How is it supposed to change my emotions? How is it supposed to change my opinions? 
Because these ayat, they're talking about something that happened a long time ago, but they're also talking about my life right now. That's the dabur. That second part is the dabur. Now the problem that has happened in the ummah, and I say this, you don't have to agree with me, this is my own analysis. People that study tafsir feel like they don't need to do tadabbur. Tafsir is enough as tadabbur. We study the tafsir, that's good enough. And then people on the flip side came along and said, these people, all they do is read these tafsirs, but they don't really connect with their heart to what the Quran is saying. I want to read a translation and I want the Quran to talk to me about what it's saying to me. I'm going to do tadabbur myself, right? So now lots and lots of Muslims are reading translations of the Qur'an and trying to do what? Tadabbur. So the people of tafsir are not doing tadabbur and the people of tadabbur are not studying tafsir. And this is a disaster. <laughs> because if you don't have the correct basic meaning and then you start contemplating on top of that, you're going to be crazy. You're going to come up with crazy conclusions. But your heart tells you it works. Oh.